Right. Hi there, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing. It is really hot out here today, but I had this weird dream about flowability. And I figured I gotta go outside and make a video about this after I wrote the email and did the little paper that I did. So I'm gonna share with you a little bit of stuff that I have going on in my head. Today we're gonna talk about how ink flows out of the tubes, how you can control it. Rock and roll. Okay, now that's over, you can tell we're prepared today because there's actually diagrams and this is weird. So let's, let's get into this. This is basically like a cross section blown up thing of, you know, what a tube, and this is a model. I noticed I didn't draw it to scale. Some of you artists out there would be like, oh, right, it looks like crap. No, just to illustrate a point here, right? What we've got is your standard tattoo tube, reservoir tip, open or closed gap, either either at the top. Uh, sometimes it'll be open, open, but we're just gonna have a closed tip here. And then a cross-sectional explosion of <laughs> zoomed in space of actually where the needle is coming out of the tube. And this, um, we're using a round versus a mag because it's just easier for me to illustrate it this way. And because I like to draw circles. So I get asked this a lot is like, how, how do you better control the pigment that's actually gonna be flowing out of the tube? And like, how can you make sure that you're keeping the area clean when you're doing a tattoo or make sure that the pigment's being delivered, you know, in a consistent manner, which will in turn consistently improve your lines, right? So I figured let's just do a quick video. It shouldn't take too, too long here, but this will also refute a lot of stuff that you may see online. Um, the first thing that we always want to address is direction, right? And this is probably the, the most hotly contested aspect of how to do a tattoo and of anything else that you'll find online. Uh, more often than not, you're gonna see people when they're doing a tattoo, pulling backwards against the front of the tube, right? They're gonna be pulling against the well. And we'll call this the well. Let's just go ahead and, a reservoir, you can call it too. Let's we'll call it a well, because it's easier to spell and I probably won't mess that up, rock and roll. Now they're gonna be pulling backwards against the well very, very slowly, especially with rotary machines. You'll see that rhythm moving very, very, very slowly while they're recording and you can just see how crispy and cool that line is. Now. I'm not saying that it doesn't work, it's just kind of inefficient. Um, the reason why everyone is moving so slow when they're going backwards is because the actual flow rate of the pigment is gonna be controlled more effectively going backwards. Now this is really sketchy, especially for people who are just starting to learn how to tattoo, because if you move too slow with your machine moving at too high of a stitch rate, you know, or a, a cycle rate, then what you're gonna do is have the needles hitting the skin too many times before the pigment is fully saturated which you know will cause massive damage. So it's it's difficult to try and measure that stuff. And this is why we, you know, not only on like the podcast or on these videos or on the website, we're always telling people to push their lines, not pull them. You can tell if you're doing a pull incorrectly because what you're gonna get is a massive amount of ink is gonna drop out of the tube right when you start. Why does this happen? This is where we get to this. <laughs> the needle is actually going to be pressing somewhat against the back of the tube, right? What this does is it controls how fast the pigment can come out. Now, as you're moving forward, doing something with the tattooing, right? The needles, when they go into the skin, they're gonna be lifted away from the back of the tube just a little bit, which is gonna allow some of the pigment to spill out. And then it's going to also be pulling it down as this is happening, right? It's gonna be creating a small cavity at the end when it deposits it into the person's skin. And that's gonna be able to give enough room as this needle comes back up to grab more pigment and start pulling it back down the tube, just like a sewing machine, right? Now, if you decide to mess with this flow by changing the direction of the machine, right? Which way it's going and not changing the fact that, you know, you wanna be keeping it back against the well, you're gonna be moving these needles to different sides of the tube, which is gonna increase or decrease the amount of flow that's actually gonna come out of it, right? If you have something in here, your needle's coming straight back, the pigment's gonna be being pulled down and running along the sides of it as it's going into the skin. If you decide to push left and that needle rolls up to the side, you have a larger cavity here, right? Which is gonna force more pigment down, increasing the flow rate. 
If you go way up at the top, it's gonna to create a very large cavernous space, which is why a lot of people, when they're using large groupings, tend to pull things backwards. You'll see this anything like above a nine round, right? Because they don't have enough ink actually coming out because they don't have their needles set right, which is going to decrease the actual flowability, which is gonna make it really hard to make it look like they have clean lines. So what they have to do is literally open it up, dump a ton of pigment onto the skin, and then drag it backwards to get saturation. So we'll be able to do an inch, stop, grab more, and keep going. It's a waste. It's not very efficient, and it can actually increase the chances of scarring that you're gonna see in a client. So how do we fix it? We're always pushing against the back of the well, right? This means if the needle is always sitting against the back, it's always pushing against the back, and we don't have too much of a rotation coming around one side or the other, you're gonna have a steady, constant flow, and you're not also gonna have a bunch of spillage. Does that make sense? So. There's another way that you can deal with this if you need to, pass just direction. If you're just like Ryan, I don't care what your science says, everyone says you should go backwards, blah, 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 that's fine. I'm not gonna sit here and fight you. <laughs> I'm not really fighting you, but I mean, maybe fighting you, but. What we can do is we can change the viscosity of the pigment, right? So at a point, viscosity is how thick something is. Right, it's more complex than that, but just to break it down so we don't have to get into some heavy, you know, chemistry or physics, the viscosity is how thick stuff is. So we can, if, if viscosity is increased, the flowability, right? And we'll go flow rate is going to, put that in R, decrease. Why? If something's thicker and you hold it upside down, it's gonna you know, take longer. If I take a, a ramp and I pour water down it, the water is gonna go down pretty quick, right? If I take that same ramp and I pour maple syrup down it, it's gonna go, you know, take a longer time to get down. That's because it has a higher viscosity. So if we increase the viscosity of these fluids, like the pigments, right, that are mixed, these fluids, it's gonna decrease the rate that they're actually gonna be able to spill down into this, which is going to, in turn, increase the fact that you're not gonna get as much spillage. But what does that do? It forces us to slow down our hand, right? So the only time that we can really work doing a pull backwards is when we have those increased viscosity fluids. And this is why a lot of like newer tattooers are like, oh, I only like this one brand. It feels right. It seems it's a little bit thicker, et cetera, et cetera. It's usually because you're running machine one way, right? The thinner pigments that you may get that are not as viscous, you're not gonna be running your machine maybe a little bit diagonally to get the line in. A little bit, you know, not as straight up and down, you know. <laughs> you may have to be tipping it straight up and down actually to get some of those really high viscous fluids to actually flow. But this is a simplification, right? This, the other things we can do is, is like gravity, right? Gravity is a constant. And if our machine is facing like, we'll go, uh, well, 45 degrees, if we're going greater than 45 degrees up, right? Where we actually are lifting it up, that pull is gonna increase. It's like taking that ramp with our maple syrup and our water and we start tipping it up and up and up, right? As our needle is coming up, it's gonna be able to flow faster. If you have a really thin, non-viscous fluid, it's gonna spell it really quick. Like certain blacks that have really no additives in them that we know of, that's another video. So usually what you'll do is you'll end up pulling your needle back to decrease that flow rate, right? It's pretty simple. So use this, if you're, if you're having trouble getting the ink into the skin, you can do a few things, right? If you wanna change the viscosity, add some vegetable glycerin. Food grade, 99.9%, right? Like food grade, vegetable glycerin. You can increase the viscosity, which is also gonna thin the pigment. So you've gotta be careful with that stuff, right? Also, when you start mixing into the bottles, you're gonna to have to probably get a mixing solution that includes isopropyl alcohol or ethyl alcohol, depending on if you're in the EU, some type of viscous fluid, usually vegetable glycerin, right? And then something else, whatever you wanna put into it, maybe rose water, something like that. Uh, it's a biocidal agents. The other thing you can do is just change your elevation, right? Or the other thing you can do is just, just push right. You're gonna to have to find a sweet spot, and this is also gonna be dependent on client's skin, their age, how good your stretch is, location of where you're doing this at, how the skin was prepped. There's, I mean, it's so complex, but if you're having trouble, this is the easiest and first way to try and just like beat that, right? Watch the way that your pigment's actually flowing out. Watch the angle that you're going. And if you need to, make it a little bit thicker. Rock and roll. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.